graders. How are you doing, Mr. Hyde here? Welcome to my beat laboratory where I have all my instruments and uh, very cool. So yes, I'm playing my drum set here and obviously you can hear so many different sounds out of the different drums. So like a snare drum, a tom, and I got my cymbals. All different sounds. And if you're wondering how we get all these different sounds, um, the interesting thing is I'm using this type of stick um, versus like a regular stick because I can control the volume. So again, what's the difference between volume and pitch? So with these sticks, I could really get loud. Um, and these, stick, these sticks actually control the volume because there's a bunch of mini sticks all put together. So I'd have to hit it a lot harder um, to make them louder. Um, but they don't change the pitch, but I can increase the volume. If I do want to change the pitch, let's say I want to change the pitch of this tom here. Can I hear what that sounds like? So if I want like a lower pitch, what do you think I would do? Would I tighten the drum or would I loosen the drum? What do you guys think? Well, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to do something here. You tell me if the pitch is getting higher or lower. Okay. I have a little key here that helps me tune the pitch. So what do you think now? It's actually a very nice sound. I kind of like that. Um, so I actually loosened the drum head and what happened to the pitch. Now I'll tighten back the drum head. And notice what happens to the pitch when I tighten the drum head. So I even tightened it a little bit more. I really like that lower tone. That was kind of nice. Let's see if I can get back to that. A little bit more. I haven't changed the volume, I'm still hitting the drum with the same force. But notice the difference between this stick and then a regular drum stick. Wow, see how the volume got louder, the pitch stayed the same. So that's kind of the cool thing that you can do with drums. Um, the other thing is obviously cymbals. And if I hit the different cymbals, they make different sounds. And notice you can really see them actually move. So if I hit this symbol, you can actually see the symbol move. What is it doing? Obviously, by now you should hopefully understand that we need vibrations in order to make sounds, to produce sounds. Uh, for us to hear sound, we have to vibrate the, also the air. Um, so remember, sound waves travel through um, materials, either a solid, liquid, or gas. So if I hit this symbol, here it makes a different sound, it's moving, and then I'll hit this symbol, which is a little bigger, it makes a different sound. Also, the material that the symbols are made of um, is different also, so that can change the sound. And then I have this real tiny little symbol here, it makes a totally different sound. And then I have a very large symbol. This is a 10 inch symbol. This is a 22 inch symbol, very big one. cool thing is when you touch the cymbal, you can feel it. You can feel actually the air vibrating um, around the cymbal, which is really cool. And back here. So if you ever go to a, a, a place like, um, like a Sam Ash or something like that, go and play the cymbals. A lot of fun. You can actually really feel it. And notice I can change the sound of the symbol too. By putting my hand over it. So yeah, I've been playing the drums for about 30 years. So do a lot of different things with the drum set. You can see behind me, 
have some other instruments here as well. I have a banjo, so I do play um, stringed instruments too. And this has five strings, and the kind of the interesting thing about a banjo, it has a drum head too. So they put like a drum head on like a guitar here, it gives it a very interesting sound. And this is a five string banjo. pegs up here that can change the pitch. So if I want to change the pitch, I need to tune to a, a certain pitch. Um, I can then tighten or loosen the um, tuning peg here to get the right sound I want. So I'm going to turn the peg. I want you to tell me if the sound is getting higher or lower. Remember, not volume. Play the same volume, but I'm going to change the pitch. So what's happening to the pitch? So what am I doing? Am I, am I tightening the string or loosening the string to get that pitch? Now I'm going to turn the peg again and tell me what's happening. And am I tightening or loosening the peg? Tighten it, stretching the string so I can get a higher pitch with uh, my banjo. And I definitely want you want to make sure your strings are in a certain tone, certain pitch, so then sounds nice. So that is a banjo, and the cool thing is it resonates. The sound waves hit this drum, um, and it vibrates and makes that sound. It's also got an open back to help that sound uh, release. Then I have probably my, one of my favorite instruments. This is a mandolin. And this has eight strings. And each of the double strings are tuned to the same pitch. Um, so this is a lot of fun. It has a totally different sound than the banjo. So when I play it, I kind of think about the sounds and why, is the, why are they making different sounds? So let me play a little bit of the mandolin here. instruments to play because it just has a really cool sound to it um, and you can do a lot of fun things um, with music on this uh, mandolin. It's very portable too um, and it's a beautiful instrument. Why is that making such a different sound than the banjo? Notice also the length of the neck is very different. So we did that remember with the ruler snap so think about when we made that ruler longer and shorter the neck um, notice it makes, does it make a higher or a lower pitch than that banjo? And again, I have tuning pegs here, so I can tighten or loosen the pegs to change the pitch um, of the mandolin. And the other cool thing about this is it also is electric. So if I wanted to plug this into an amplifier and run it through an amplifier, if I'm playing a, a place that's very large and I want everybody to hear it, I can uh, plug it in and make it electric. So basically what happens is there's a pickup inside um, the mandolin. So the sound resonates, moves, hits that pickup, and then the pickup turns it into a digital signal, which then runs it to um, an amplifier, which is really cool. The computer's going to sleep. I don't want you to go to sleep. So that is my uh, mandolin. down the neck, I change the pitch too. So there's so many different ways how I can change the pitch of an instrument, either by tuning it or just playing up and down the neck. I'm changing the length of the string, um, or I can tighten it or loosen it. So so many different things uh, you can do.
So that's my drums, mandolin, banjo, and then I'm gonna move over to my guitars here, because I have a couple guitars. And I want you to notice my two guitars here that I have. Actually, I have three in the picture, but these two in particular on the ground. Notice the size, they're very different in size. Um, this one compared to this one, this one's got a very large body. Um, this one's got a tinier body. So what would that do to the sound? What do you think that would do? Um, how would they sound different? Even though they're pretty much the same type of guitar, there's, there are six string guitars, but they are very different in size. This one's even a little shorter in neck, but you also see the body there. So let me grab this guitar here. It's got the very large body. It's a six string guitar. Great sound, the sound moves when I strike these strings. Notice the pitch. This would be a high E, a uh, low E string. Notice I said low. And you can even see it's pretty cool. When you strike the string, you can actually see it uh, move and vibrate. And then this is a high E string, so it's, a, it's still the same, uh, same volume but different pitches as far as so it's still an E but it's a high E so what happens is the sound goes into this chamber here resonates and makes it louder so it actually changes the volume um, which you'll hear differently on the other guitar, what do you think the volume will be? The pitches I can still keep the same because I always tune each guitar um, the same way. Um, e, A, D, G, B, E. So that's how I tune them, make sure I'm in the same pitch, good pitch there when I'm playing with other, with other people. But I love playing this guitar because it's nice and loud, has a really beautiful sound. You can really hear the sound ring. So let me switch over to the other guitar. And you can hear the difference. See, it's a shorter body. So do you, uh, shorter neck, but a smaller body, smaller chamber. So do you think it'll be louder or softer than the other guitar when I play it? A little bit out of tune, but that's okay. Happens in Florida weather when it gets hot and cold, it uh, changes the string too. The weather has to do with that. Notice it's a lot quieter because it doesn't have as large a body as the other guitar, so it's a little bit quieter. And the interesting thing is, I just put new strings on this one. Um, the strings can get old and can get dirty and stuff, and that can also affect the sound of the guitar. So I put brand new strings makes it sound brighter. You can really hear that sound. Um, you can see the strings vibrate. And um, again, I can, I can control the volume. Um, this one's also electric, so I could plug it into an amplifier if I want to make it really loud um, so I can control the, the volume there. And then I can also strike it harder too, which increases the volume. Notice the pitch is not changing. All I'm doing is changing the volume. So very cool. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Um, again, this is probably my favorite science unit just because uh, it involves sounds and um, playing different instruments. So this, this unit was a lot of fun and I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you understand uh, pitch um, and how we produce sound. You have to strike something to produce the sound 
and then that has to vibrate something, either air um, or even a liquid or a solid. We notice that when we strike the cymbal, um, it does vibrate that solid. So sound does travel through solids. We know um, sound can travel through walls. Um, you can hear somebody talking when the doors are closed. Sound can travel through solids. Um, even underwater, you know, animals that make sound underwater. Um, sounds might, might sound strange to us, uh, but totally sounds uh, normal to other different animals, whales and things like that. Um, but you need something for the sound to travel through. Um, if we're in space or something, I know we watch all the movies and Star Wars and everything, um, but when something explodes or something, there's no air or anything for that sound to travel through. So would you hear it? Back to when we were talking about the moon. If you were hammering a rock, or if I, let's say I brought my guitar up there and wanted to play on the moon, that would be kind of strange, um, and you were standing, would you even be able to hear me playing um, the guitar? Um, so we need to vibrate the air for the sound waves to travel to our ears, and then our ears pick up that sound, and then transmit it to our brain, and our brain would say, that's a really nice sound. Or it might say, that's not a really nice sound. Or if I play something too loud, you're like, ah, that's too loud. Or I can't really hear, I need you to make it louder. Um, so that's all about sound. So thank you guys for joining me in my beat laboratory. And um, you have a recording page, hopefully you filled that out. And this helped you um, learn all about sound. Thank you guys very much and we'll see you next time.